Hello, this is Pastor Malin Smith, pastor here at New Hope Baptist Church here in Watertown, New York, where our vision is living life together by bringing new hope in Jesus to all people. And I welcome you to our ongoing video series, Journeying Through the Books of the Bible, where today we're going to take a look at Paul's letter to the Galatian churches. If we were to assign a key verse to this book of the Bible, we could say Galatians 5.1 would be a good candidate. We read in Galatians 5.1, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. That's Galatians 5.1. And one of the main themes that we find in the book of Galatians is that of freedom. And thus, that's why we're assigning this proposed theme, the gospel of freedom. Now, as you'll look here on the left side of the board, just some quick facts about the book of Galatians to help us to understand why this book of the Bible is in the New Testament. First, it's one of, it's the, one of the earliest books uh, written uh, that went into the New Testament. Matter of fact, it's the first of Paul's letters. Um, alongside with the book of James, it is the oldest uh, New Testament book. And so this means then that the book of Galatians would have been written before even any of the four Gospels. Even though the four Gospels appear uh, at the beginning of our New Testaments due to their priority and the fact that they tell about the uh, life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, yet in terms of the chronology of the writing of the books of the Bible, Galatians is among the earliest. In terms of the key doctrine that we find taught in the book of Galatians, it is that of justification. Now, what is justification? Well, when it comes to describing Christian salvation, at saving faith, God declares the sinner to be righteous. And what God does in this legal declaration of justification, he credits the sinner with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now I have here a tablet, and this tablet has a little red line going down on the left side. And maybe you've seen uh, notebooks or you may own one. This is what we call a left justified margin. And what this does, this helps you to be able to write uh, in a straight line. And so whatever you're writing on this pad, the left side will remain perfectly straight. And so they call this a left justified margin. Uh, when you're typing on a computer, sometimes you'll uh, type out what's called right justi justified. And the reason they call this a justified line is because it keeps everything straight. But when it comes to salvation, how is it that one is made right with God? How is it that one is justified with God? Well, Galatians tells us, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26 says this, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So one of the arguments that Paul is going to make, and that is central to the book of Galatians, is that we're not justified or made right with God by obedience to the law. Uh, there were certain opponents uh, that were infiltrating the churches in Galatia who were called Judaizers. And they taught that in order to have salvation, you had to be circumcised. You had to adhere to the Mosaic law. Uh, you had to become a Jew because as the church was growing and as it was spreading throughout the Mediterranean world, it was becoming increasingly Gentile. And so these Judaizers were telling uh, new converts, look, if you want to be part of the church, if you want to be a Christian, uh, you have to be circumcised. You have to submit yourself to all the rites of Judaism. And so what they were setting up was a form of works righteousness. Well, what Paul did in the book of Galatians, he said, no, no, no. No, the way in which one is justified, the way in which one is uh, reconciled to a holy, righteous God is by faith alone. And thus, this is why the book of Galatians is oftentimes deemed uh, the book of the gospel of freedom. Bob Utley in the Holman Commentary notes, the book of Galatians is one of the clearest expressions of the radically new and free truth of salvation by grace alone through faith alone. It is often called the Magna Carta of Christian liberty, end quote. So the book of Galatians gives us the gospel 
It defends and it declares the gospel. And that's the purpose of this book. Now, you may have recalled in an earlier video on the book of Romans how the book of Romans also featured uh, this doctrine of justification by faith. But the purpose of the book of, of Romans was to present that doctrine in all of its fullness. Galatians takes more of a defensive posture because, again, it's trying to defend the true gospel that is taught in both Old and New Testaments against those who are trying to say that man is justified by works rather than by faith. We understand that the book of Galatians establishes Paul's conversion uh, in the first two chapters. And so if you were to read the first two chapters of the book of Galatians, what Paul does, he rehearses his conversion experience. Now, the reason this is important is because this actually establishes for us the date of Paul's conversion. If we take Christ's death and resurrection to have occurred in 33 AD, then Paul's conversion would have occurred at the earliest in 34 AD, roughly a year after Christ's ascension. And what Christ did, he appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus. And thus what that does then, that also establishes for us when Paul would have received uh, the gospel, because that's one of the arguments that Paul makes, how he had received the gospel from Christ himself. And thus, if you turn, for example, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, first few verses, Paul says, this is the gospel that I deliver unto you which I first received. And so that actually helps us in arguing for the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So why is the book of Galatians important to you? Well, it helps us to understand better the gospel that saves, uh, that imparts unto us salvation, but also two other important points, namely the gospel that sanctifies and sustains every follower of Jesus Christ. Now, what do I mean by sanctify? Well, the gospel is not only for sinners and leading them unto salvation in Christ by justification by faith, but the gospel also continues to function as a way of sanctifying us because as we expose ourselves to the gospel, as we rely upon the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we understand that the gospel has this cleansing effect with it. And so in terms of declaring the gospel, we are declaring a gospel that saves, that continually sanctifies. It is what leads us to the cross that saves us, and it's, at, and it's from the cross that we base our sanctification or, or our ongoing Christian experience following our justification. And the gospel also sustains us. It preserves us. It keeps us. So if we were to outline the book of Galatians, we could first of all note defending the gospel of freedom. And again, that's what Paul does in the first two chapters. Then declaring the gospel of freedom. Now, you may have noticed that I have been referring repeatedly to this theme of freedom. And in terms of what does the gospel actually free us from? Well, in chapter 1, we understand that it frees us from this current age. People all over the world are trying to be more popular, better looking, all of the pressures of life. But what the gospel does, it reminds me that I don't find my ultimate worth in myself or in other people. I find my worth in Christ. Uh, in chapter 2, we understand that the gospel frees us from self-righteousness. Uh, the problem with the Judaizers, Paul's opponents in Galatia, were that they said, no, the way you please God is by performance. And sadly, in a lot of churches today, we even see that from time to time. But no, God accepts us on the grounds of what Christ has already achieved for us. In chapter 3 of Galatians, we are freed from religious performance. We bring pleasure to God all because of what Christ has done. I love this. We also are freed by the gospel from our past. A lot of people uh, still hang on to the past, cling on to the past. But Christ rewrote our past at salvation. And thus, now our past is defined by him, which means then we have hope for the future and we have faith the faith that we need to carry on in the present. And so the gospel frees us from things, and it frees us to things. What does it free us to do? It frees us to live for God by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, justification grants to us a position with God. I am 
the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. God has declared that to me at salvation. I'm credited with the righteousness of Christ. But now in sanctification, what the Holy Spirit does, he frees me to become an experience in sanctification whom God has already declared me to be in justification. So, for example, in Galatians 5.16, but I say walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. So we see then that the gospel frees us to live for God. And that's what makes this such a powerful letter. That's what makes us such a powerful book of the Bible because we have this gospel of freedom. And so this is the book of Galatians in a nutshell. And I would encourage you to read it. It's only six chapters in length, but I assure you it'll be well worth your time. This is Pastor Malin Smith. Thank you for joining us in this study of Galatians, the Gospel of Freedom.